dates of the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel and by Jesus. An hypothesis of Dr. Galen Curra based upon the Greek sources of Daniel, of Maccabees, of Jesus, and of Josephus. Hypothesis The prophet Daniel foresaw two desolations the desolation of the temple under Antiochus in the Greek era, and the desolation of Jerusalem and the temple in the Roman era. Presuppositions The prophet Daniel lived and prophesied in the 6th century BCE. The book of Daniel reports Daniel's prophecies. The apocryphal book of 1st Maccabees recounts true events of the 2nd century BCE. The canonical Gospels of the New Testament report true teachings of Jesus Christ. The writings of Flavius Josephus recount true events of the 1st century CE. Daniel's Greek-era prophecy of desolation I heard a holy one speaking, for how long is this vision concerning the regular burnt offering, the transgression that makes desolate, and the giving over of the sanctuary and host to be trampled? And he answered him, For two thousand three hundred evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be restored to its rightful state. The king shall turn back and pay heed to those who forsake the holy covenant. Forces sent by him shall occupy and profane the temple and fortress. They shall abolish the regular burnt offering and set up the abomination that makes desolate. From the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that desolates is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Fulfillment of the Greek era prophecy of Daniel Judean rebels apostatize. Certain renegades came out from Israel and misled many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the Gentiles around us. This proposal pleased them, and some of the people eagerly went to the king Antiochus, who authorized them to observe the ordinances of the Gentiles. The temple is robbed. After subduing Egypt, Antiochus returned in the 143rd year, 167 8 BCE. He went up against Israel and came to Jerusalem with a strong force. He arrogantly entered the sanctuary and took the golden altar, the lampstand for the light, and all its utensils. On every side of the sanctuary they shed innocent blood, they even defiled the sanctuary. The temple is desolate. They erected a desolating sacrilege on the altar of burnt offering. They offered sacrifice on the altar that was on top of the altar of burnt offering. Jerusalem was uninhabited like a wilderness. The sanctuary was trampled down, and Dalians held the citadel, it was a lodging place for the Gentiles. They cleansed the sanctuary and removed the defiled stones to an unclean place. The temple is restored. Early in the morning on the twenty-fifth day of the ninth month, which is the month of Chiself, in the 148th year, they rose and offered sacrifice, as the Lord erects, on the new altar of burnt offering that they had built. Daniel's Roman-era prophecy of desolation. After the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing, and the troops of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. He shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week he shall make sacrifice and offering cease, and in their place shall be an abomination that desolates until a decreed end is poured out upon the desolator. Jesus' Roman-era prophecy of desolation When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. For these are days of vengeance, as a fulfillment of all that is written. And Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled.
when you see the desolating sacrilege standing in the holy place, as was spoken of by the prophet Daniel, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. Fulfillment of the Roman Era Prophecies Titus marched out of Egypt into Judea. The sacrifice called the daily sacrifice had failed, and had not been offered to God, for lack of men to offer it, and that the people were grievously troubled by it. The sacrifices which were now discontinued. Titus went into the holy place of the temple, with his commanders, and saw it, with what was in it. The Romans, upon the flight of the seditious into the city, and upon the burning of the holy house itself, and of all the buildings around it, brought their ensigns to the temple and set them opposite its eastern gate, and they did they offer sacrifices to them. I gave you permission to fight in another place. Yet have you still despised every one of my proposals, and have set fire to your holy house with your own hands. Titus gave orders to the soldiers both to burn and to plunder the city. And thus was Jerusalem taken, in the second year of the reign of Vespasian, on the eighth day of the month. It had been taken five times before, though this was the second time of its desolation. As soon as the army had no more people to slay or to plunder, Caesar Titus gave orders that they should now demolish the entire city and temple. Conclusion Daniel's prophecies of an abomination of desolation in the Jerusalem temple have been fulfilled once in the Greek era and again in the Roman era. Jesus' prophecy of an abomination of desolation in the Jerusalem temple has been fulfilled as Daniel had predicted. Because there is no longer a temple in Jerusalem, there will be no further abomination of desolation either before Jesus' return or at his return. Thus, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul, writing about a coming man of sin who enters God's temple, does not quote from Daniel or from Jesus.